everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm Ricardo Blair. Today we are getting back into folk music. This is something that you guys request a lot and it's something I really love to play. Today we're going to be learning an Irish jig called the Victor's Return. First I'm going to teach you the tune really simply, just basically the notes. And after that we're going to go through a bunch of different ways in which you can add ornaments to the tune to make it sound more folky. So you can take this video as far as you want. You can just learn the tune, you can choose to add some or all of the ornaments and you can even even take these ornaments and apply them to different pieces. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon to make sure you get a little notification when I publish a video. Okay, let's hear the tune. The Victor's Return, it has a lot of other names. I've seen it also called Max Fancy or The Rover's Return. It's a jig, which means it's a dance in six, eight time. It's in two parts, A part and the B part, they both repeat. And folk music is an oral tradition, so rather than always being written down, tunes were taught by ear. This means that there would be a lot of different versions, and I've seen a lot of different versions of this tune floating around the internet. So if you've played it before and it's slightly different, that's completely normal. So to teach you the tune, I'm just gonna play it really slowly. I'm gonna put the sheet music and the notes on the screen. So with a combination of my fingers, your ears, the notes, the letters, you should be able to learn it. with everything on YouTube, feel free to pause the video, go over it again. If you click on the cog icon, you can speed up and slow down the video without changing the pitch. So that can help you too. Great, if you've got all of those notes under your fingers, that's fantastic. But at the moment, we're still sounding very classical and I want to get more close to the folk style. So there's quite a few ways in which we can do this. The very first and one of the most important is the feeling. In classical music, you have the first beat of the bar. A one, a two, two. Oh, one. Da, da. But in folk music, like a lot of music made to dance to, we want to turn this around. So as this is in 6-8, we want to be feeling the strong beats of the bar on the second half. Instead of... Okay, I'm going to take you through a few different folk ornaments that we're going to add in one by one. The first one we're going to add is an ornament called a cut, and this is a little jump upwards. And we're going to be using it in the first bar 
we're going to use our cut to differentiate between those two A's and it's going to sound like this. The secret is to keep your first finger as light and relaxed as possible. You're not dragging it up and shoving it back down, but just letting it bounce. So let's hear the start of the tune with our cuts between those two A's. This brings me to the second ornament we're going to use, and that is splitting up the two G's at the end of this little phrase. You can also use the same cut. Why not? But if you want to add something else to your arsenal, we can use a tap. So a cut goes up, a tap goes down. And like its name, it's very short, light. You're just literally tapping the instrument. Let's hear the cuts and the taps together. Most of the time where you use a cut, you can also use a tap. So let's see if I can turn this around. The next one we're gonna do is seems a little bit more complicated. This is called a roll and we're going to also be putting it in the first bar in the second half. So the will become and the good news is wherever you have three descending notes you can usually add this as well. So we can put it in bar one but also bar three and also in the B part. And another folky ornament that we're gonna add in is the slide. A slide is a glissando upwards. And you do it by rolling your finger off the hole. This is much easier on a whistle because they have bigger holes. On a recorder, you're gonna to have to be a bit more controlled, but we can do it. And in this tune, we're gonna add it in when we're going into the B part that starts on, a, on an A. And the last thing we're gonna add isn't actually a folk ornament as such, but it's a bit of melodic variation. Now, as I've already said, every folk tune will have a million different versions. It will differ from village to village. So I think it's absolutely fine to add a couple of little variations in the melody. So in our B part, we have our that keeps coming back. And it can be nice to add a cheeky G sharp. This just adds a bit of variation. So it's gonna sound like this. So what have we got? Cuts, taps, rolls, slides, bit of melodic variation. When practicing, tackle these one at a time and let it become really natural before you try taking the next one. Otherwise, you might get your fingers in a knot. Uh, but I'm gonna try and put them all together now. the victor's return the most important thing you can actually do if you really want to get into this style is listen as much as possible to other people playing it um i want to give a shout out to joe broughton who is the fiddle player that i learned this tune from he is amazing you should definitely listen to some of his stuff i'm going to put some links down in the description if you have actually learned this tune before and have a version of it that you like to listen to or other music please share in the comments 
and that was it from me today. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Down here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. And up here is a link to a video I made on folk ornaments where I go much more into detail about which ornament and how to play them. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!